literally here right now in the uh, experience VIP. Oh, uh, thanks. You can go. For instance, We're going to I'll leave five right now. Transitions. Red of real estate in the Red Lois Universal Studios Hollywood. 400 acres. The biggest and busiest movie studio in the world. Across the street, Warner Brothers and a Walt Disney Studios. This is a huge metropolis for filmmaking, and the main reason we chose this spot in the world is the consistent weather. The King of Cinema, movies are made in Paris, New Jersey, Chicago, New York City. Filmmakers got real tired of the wind, rain, and snow. They said, where can we go? When the sun is always shining on a consistent basis, it turns out right here in the San Fernando Valley is the best spot for that. We officially open our doors March 15th, 1950. On your screens are pictures of our first day of business. That's our founder, Carl Lemley, in a tuxedo, very excited. He had dreamed about building a city for movie making. It finally happened. He told everybody, I just want to make movies that will make audiences laugh, cry, and sit on the edge of their seats. And it well connects us eventually right here to the front lot and pulls a bunch of sound stages. The biggest of these stages is on your left. Currently home of The Voice. Has anyone watched The Voice? Yes. Uh, yeah, Adam Levine, Blake Shelf, Kelly Clarkson, John Legend, they're always in there hanging out. Same stage is used to build big sets for Back to the Future, The Grinch, Jurassic Park, and even Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean series. In a stage, you really can build whatever world you want. Television, film, commercial, music, video. Now, a lot of the time, Tim and I will mention superstar people will say, I've never heard of it. Well, that's okay, guys. There are a thousand channels to watch these days. If you're missing a show, and I really hope it's not because you're watching, some sort of Kardashian thing. Uh, yeah, it's because there's a lot of options these days, but Superstore is a network show, and it's very top rated. It gets great ratings every single week. That's why they're in season five, not season, you know, one and a half, guys. Right? Because yeah, they're doing really well. And a lot of the store is built in these stages. So when you're watching the show, why, why aren't they filming in a real store? Because real stores are busy and full of people. Hard to get a camera angle inside of. These are built for camera angles and they're soundproof inside, so that's better. A little bit more of the store over here to your left, by the way, in stage 21. Six kids used to build big sets for Back to the Future, The Grinch, and of course, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, one of the best horror movies ever made. Right ahead here, we are gonna be swinging by some sound stages that are a tad bit smaller. We use these mainly for sitcoms throughout the years. Sitcom traditionally, a TV show filled in front of a live audience. Shows like Different Strokes, Silver Spoons, The Jefferson, Who's the Boss, Coach, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So we're here right now. Uh, we just wrapped up the uh, last episode of The Good Place, Dr. Kristen Bell, Ted Danson, season two of Good Girl, Kristen Hendricks, and Family Feud, hosted by Steve Harvey. We are going to be back to stage 44 on your right side. Uh, this is where The Good Place filmed for the last four years. Also is used for Albert Hitchcock's The Birds and probably the, the best comedy of all time. Dude, where's my car? <laughs> I'm yep. joking, guys. I, I love it. Over here in your left, you'll see Ted. Uh, and I know this is the beginning of our drive past the production bundle. But before you see anything on screen, it's developed into a great concept with help of our writers, directors, producers, and sometimes actors. They're in the office all the time crafting ideas. If we like what you're doing creatively, we want to work with you. So we'll sign a contract with you exclusively. That way, whatever you're doing, we get the first chance to work with you on it. And that's why we have a contract right now with Jennifer Lopez. You guys heard of her? Yep. She's got a movie in theaters right now, she's very well called Hustler. She's also a singer. She took a helicopter once to get to work. It's normally a two minute drive, but she took a helicopter. She's getting from the block. That's how it works, guys. Uh, also, right over here, we're working with Illumination Entertainment producers of Despicable Me. Sick. Mark Platt, the producer of the Broadway musical Wicked, which we're turning into a movie shortly. Brownstone Entertainment, run by Elizabeth Banks. She has a new one coming out soon called Charlie's Angels. All right, Kristen Stewart. And then finally, Bundle of 5195, which is the old office of Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, my God. Is currently occupied by the dealer records company. Newer sound stage is on your left. We are using for Will and Grace. Oh, Will and, and Grace. Good girl. Sorry, Christina Hendricks. But now the door's closed. We've got two things happening here. Mm -hmm. So far at the end of our journey He's to our front lot, we're about to jump into the back lot. And back you're going to start to see huge cityscape. 1980s version, it's the same. Oh, my God. Uh, actually, right here, we're going to make a bit of a turn. And here you'll see the Brownstone Apartments made famous from the sea. In Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey. Freeze frame it, guys. Look at this. There's Jim 
and around him you see trees, the speed limit signs, none of that is here today. These are elements that we bring in just for the production. Tim is our resident expert on this location. He's going to show you around the area right now, so bring your cameras. So, this is where they filmed Home Alone 2, and he froze the bricks up on that roof. How cool is that? That's incredible. <laughs> So that you're shooting a film and you're on a budget, you can show somebody coming down from their apartment, get in their cab and drive away, then move the cab over here and show them to drive up and go inside the building and go to work. So, um, if, if any of you have been watching The Voice for several years, for a couple of years, they said this was where they went to audit together. One thing they do a lot of these sets is food. Most of it's not what it looks like it is. Uh, and we also use a lot of tools and perspective. Now, if you're not specifically looking for it, look at the side of this wall. Notice the windows. The second floor windows are not as big as the first. The yeah. third floor windows are smaller than the second. So it, they get smaller as they go up. They make it look smaller than it actually is. Come on this way, friends. Now, if any of you would like to get photos on any of the steps, you're welcome to do so. Yes. That was Jim Carrey's apartment right there from Bruce Almighty. Wow. Tap on these stones and on these bricks. These are all made out of giant sheets of recycled plastic. We put it in a mold and put it in what we call a vacuum press, and it presses out all the air. And it leaves us with these that we can just stay on the wall. Back to the future. Welcome to Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Yay. Yay. <laughs> they get a better education from Jeff and I than they do in school. There's the gas station. <gasps> yeah, that's the gas station over there. Oh my goodness. Uh, right there in front of the grass, you're in the sun, and you can get the entire courthouse behind you. steps to the jail where Atticus Finch had to sit in the shotgun all night to protect Mr. Robinson from the bombs. <laughs> and just in case anyone was doubting the manliness, I could move the wall. They had this little bit of space here between our small town and our big city. What do you do? They just added a uh, nice unloading dock here. We can come in here at night. They can be doing an illegal drug deal, unloading the truck. <laughs> and this, again, is forced perspective. We want the bad guys to look really big. So that is not nearly as big as a real loading dock. Yeah. We can put somebody, a short actor there, they look huge. A lot of actors like that. <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, but let's just cruise over this way. <laughs> they shot a couple episodes of CSI in here. Also Criminal Minds. Welcome to New York! Oh, we just traveled across the country. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago! <laughs> if you look 
right next to the revolving doors over there. Sit and they but a lot of times, the movie doesn't take place in So we'll take the Macy's signs down and make that hotel. Macy's. Yeah, just remember the signage is. This was Chicago with the Blues Brothers. When they dropped the window, they made a big hole in the street. This was Los Angeles in Transformers. Shia LaBeouf started running about right there with the All Spark. Buildings were blowing up all around. American Ninja Warriors built their obstacle course here for a couple of seasons. And just about all the superhero movies shot here at one time or another. They hooked up Ridge on top, show Spider-Man swinging down the street. Captain America First Avenger, this was the street where Steve Rogers was chasing the Hydra agent who had stolen the serum, holding on to the top of the taxi cab. And this was also Swing in London at Austin Powers, the spy who shot him. Up the end up there. They had the Elvis Costello for the Right now we are in the prop part of Universal Studios and we are now looking in front of us at a shark right now. Another little bit of trivia on top that is actually a travesty. Alfred Hitchcock never won an Academy Award. They did give him one for his body of work when he was older but he never officially won. So friends, these are the second oldest sets on our entire life. This we call Little Europe. This was originally built to be German in the movie All Quiet on the Western Front, 1929-1930. In that same movie, they needed a little bit of France. So they just painted the buildings a different color and changed the language on the side. <laughs> We've been doing that ever since. This has been just about every European country you could possibly imagine. This was Paris and the Pink Panther with Steve Martin. There was also Paris and the Muppets. Where it says yogurt, yogurt, yogurt. That was a Parisian cafe where Kermit could keep and talk about their relationship. This has been Pamplona, Spain, at least four different times for the running of the balls. Yeah. <laughs> they also shot the guy for the work here for the running of the whole ball. starting with the Ford Cobra Mustang, the 2018 remake of the Knight Rider. Uh, how do you think a rabbit or something? One of my favorites is a Magnum PI. There is one of many Ferrari 308s that were built for Not Thomas right Alex. now. Back to the Future uses cars to help transport you to their many different time periods. So you got Nips 1955 vehicle and then also some futuristic rides from Back to the Future Part 2. In 1989, filmmakers had to decide what a 2015 vehicle would look like. Check out that Ford Pro. They nailed it. Looks just like a Prius. Yeah. Guys, they didn't have an actual time machine. They had to just figure out what they thought a future car would look like. Yeah, to me, that is a Prius, really. The only thing missing is the Lyft and Uber sticker that usually is on every Prius. Uh, we also have some self-motivated cars from the Flintstones. These are Greta, Thunberg approved. Fully foot motivated guys, no gasoline, no carbon emissions. 
But if you that's want to go fast, you probably need some diesel. And these cars are for you no. to fast and furious. Definitely employ some muscle cars and some ports. Jurassic Tie Road. in the room together the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. Wow. It also appeared in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And that title is very apropos because the kingdom truly falls. Those dinosaurs are headed a whole new direction. And a direction that I believe we always saw coming. Because let's be honest, didn't you watch Jurassic Park in 1993 and think to yourself, man, I can't wait to see these dinosaurs hanging out in Las Vegas. Mm. I thought the same thing, guys. Well, guys, let's go back to the park because I believe the park is way, way, way better than the world. Welcome. Oh my god! Now on your left you'll see a mobile lab that was tangled off the edge of a cliff in the lost world of Jurassic Park. Big huge stunt scene required us to film in a sound stage on the side of a parking structure and on the Universal lot. So you're looking at three different locations to make this scene. Well, oh wait a minute, wow. what am I talking about guys? I should be warning you about the dinosaurs! Oh! Uh, ah. <laughs> Like, uh, some people in the back didn't get a chance to see those dinosaurs, so you can just go. Uh, <laughs> Let's, uh, the key people in the back is not going to see those dinosaurs. Oh my god! <laughs> dinosaurs are not upset at you, they're actually celebrating. They've been very pumped up ever since they won the NBA championship. Look at this one. Because it's been a million years since they want anything. Look at that. Spinosaurus jumping out of the tree there on your left. <laughs> Jurassic World mainly filmed in New Orleans and Hawaii. Locations are important. Sometimes we'll travel the planet looking for the most exotic location to film with. Just like flex lids, earthquake, big fat liar. As we arrive, it's yeah. pretty wet. We use it all the time for a rain sequence. Rain never happens when we want around here. We have to create it so the director yells action. So, the area is set up. Oh, big fat liar! Big fat liar! Oh my god! Oh my god! Rain always adds a little drama, dangerous suspense to it. Let's have the rain, guys! Yell out, rain! Rain! rain. Oh, look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> And didn't they get more dramatic? Did you feel that? You can film a scene where two people tell each other I love you in regular weather, but why would you do that? You do it in the rain. Let's do it in the rain, guys. It's definitely more intense. And if rain does not add the level of drama you're after, you might want to want something extra. Like a flood. So just for you, here's something your very own VIP experience flood. You're going to get wet. Oh. Awesome. oh my god. 13,000 gallons. Ah! 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 Hey, this is the dryer part of Mexico. You probably saw it in Westworld as the town of Pariah. It was also using the opening of Three Migos with Steve Martin and Martin Short. Take a look at that coffin over there, guys. See that coffin? Yeah. Right by the door frame? That was built for Tom Cruise to stand inside of for the puppy. No. <laughs> you know where I was going with that. Okay. Because Tim already hit on it. I'm just going to say, guys, Tom Cruise, he's not short. He's 5'7". I mean, that's most actors hype around here. Also, I'm very afraid of Tom Cruise because he is a 7th degree black belt in Kondo. Kondo? Nope, yep, Kondo. So yeah, don't mess with Tom Cruise, guys. He'll just kill you with his thoughts. He's very powerful in the world of, of many forms of martial arts, but yeah, many in Nintendo. Uh, looking around right now, uh, Six Points, Texas, this is where we mainly filmed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, starring Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Actually, Leo would have been right there on that that area to your left, on the steps, uh, working with a younger actress for a big scene, and then they would go inside this building and do a scene with Luke Perry. Big, big part of the movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a two and a half hour film, but about 30 to 40 minutes of the movie does take place right here at this location. And it was 1969 era. 
But what's cool about it was, this is supposed to be a Western TV show set. So here you are looking at kind of a Western set, but then on the outskirts of the set, 1969 vehicles all the way around, or any car before 1969 anyway, lining up all around us. So you had like basically this huge kind of time capsule so that those satellite dishes would get you the, get you the sports to watch. And right now we're back to a little Europe, that European town, from the good place. Birthplace of our Universal Monsters, Frankenstein and Dracula, and support loyal for Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean series. Tablona for their running of the bowls and the opening of the city slickers. The parade was here for Genovia and Princess Diaries 2, Royal and Kingdom. If you're a fan of Jarhead with Jimmy Fox, you both have been to here. At the very top, you're going to see the Court of Miracles, all our channel. Very fun do-it-yourself home improvement show comes here Monday through Friday, and they're currently doing their Halloween episodes. Quiet down here. stay broken most of the time. They developed three sharks, but they tested them in fresh water. When they decided to shoot them in the Atlantic Ocean, the first time they turned them on was salt. Stored out all the electrics and they sank to the bottom of the ocean. The movie was supposed to shoot in 55 days. It took 159. Oh. If the tripled and quadrupled their budget, Mr. Spielberg with a young 27-year-old director, he was afraid he may never work again. And when the movie came out, film and film history at that time. Now even though the shark stayed broken, Mr. Spielberg did give him a name. He named him Bruce. Bruce. Yep. He named him after the lawyer. <laughs> if you've seen the animated feature film Finding Nemo, the great white shark is Bruce. That's a tribute to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> this house over here on the right is a practical house. So remember earlier I said practical means you can shoot inside. This was Miss Mona's chicken ranch from our musical The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas with Dolly Parton. That's also where Rob Zombie, that was the Firefly house in the House of a Thousand Corpses for you horror fans. And also for you horror fans, this is... <laughs> 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 
Did you, did you watch that show? Yeah. For eight seasons, they shot here. They call this Wisteria Lane. Yeah. But folks, we call this Colonial Street. And they did actually shoot on uh, Mike Mirror on Elm Street Part 6 here. Mm. And that house on your left, Bob and Lee's house in Desperate, that was the yeah. original Munster's house. That was 1313 Mockingbird Lane. That's the house in Mike Mirror on Elm Street. street. Where they shot the birds with Tom Hanks. You recognize the houses from Desperate, but they've been around for a long time. This house, Ronald Reagan lived in with a chimpanzee in bedtime for Bonzo. And Doris Day and Rock Hudson lived there in a movie called The Thrill of It All. You gotta watch this, guys. They need your help. Now, again, for eight seasons, this was used as Desperate Housewives in Stereo Lane, but they only built a couple of houses for that show. Most have been around for a long time. This house here was uh, Mike McClubber's house, but the Ace Hardware, they, that's on their website. They use that to show you how they fix up all the stuff and use yeah. their tools. And this house on the left is here, a remake of the Beaver Cleaver home. We made the movie Leave it to Beaver. Also, if you saw the film Why Him with Brian Cranston, that was the house at the end of the film in Chicago. It's snowing and a helicopter lands here in the street and Kiss gets out. That was also Flash Gordon's house in Ted Chief. Ten of them were for sets, one was for just putting on makeup. Because every day the hoodies had to come and get their own noses put on. But, but this is what's left. You may recognize the pink house. That was Martha May Huvier's house, played by Christine Baranski. And here's a scene that's shot there. She's putting up her Christmas lights with a cannon. Now folks, if you look at this carefully, you can see how Ron Howard directed this, this shot. He had them put all of the lights up with that crank. She's pulling them down into the cannons. Then they run the film backwards. Mm. And if Dr. Seuss were alive today, he might say something like this. The Who's down in Whoville, they loved Christmas a lot. But the Grinch and their other nasty neighbor did not. Who's the other nasty neighbor? Well, I'll give you a hint. He was kind of a psycho. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, there's both of them. There it is. Well, they say he's not a nice guy. He's helping that lady to a car. <laughs> oh, he said, hey Norman, you want to sign some autographs? Pull out a pen, brother. That's not a pen, that's a Sharpie. <laughs> this is the original house from Psycho. Now, if you look up in the second floor window, Mother is still rocking up there. You know, Jeff has been pointing out the importance of costumes All and props and sets. Here's another great example of music. Music, a good musical score can just really make or break. You can't hear that music without thinking of the shower. So at the end of the shoot, Paramount called us and said, please keep the plane. We don't want to deal with it anymore. It cost them millions of dollars to pick it up and move it, so we negotiated with them to keep it. We turn it into part of our tour. So when the regular tour shows up, spins the turbines, adds some smoke and sound effects, makes it more dramatic for their arrival and shows off. Well, we think it's a very impressive piece of movie history. We have used it for a logic video. Rihanna has been here, Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah. Community, the television yeah. show, Key and Peele, an Netflix mm -hmm. show called Love, America's Next Top Model. But mainly, it's focused is on the time and world. The cameras are coming.